You know, I just love putting things together. There's something about building a brand new device, such as a server, getting all the parts, putting them in the case, setting up the operating system and so on, that's just so much fun. And speaking of fun, recently I've had some fun with this right here, which is a custom Touring Pi build that I've recently put together that I'll be showing off in this video. So you might be wondering, what exactly is a Touring Pi? Well, if you're not already aware, the Touring Pi is a mini ITX board that you can install in a mini ITX compatible case. And on that board, you can slot a handful of compute modules, specifically Raspberry Pi compute modules. And each one acts as an independent server, but there's only one board. And you can set up a Kubernetes cluster, install individual server applications on each one. And essentially, it allows you to have a server in a box. It's really cool. And that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. Now the Turing Pi board itself was provided to me by Turing Machines for this review. However, I retain full creative control over this video and all of my others, and nobody is going to see this video before you guys, so all of the opinions in this video are my own. And in this video, I'm going to show you what the board looks like, how it's set up, and I'm even going to install a K3S cluster on it as well, and you'll see the entire process. Now, I've actually had this board in the studio for over a month. It took me some time to actually get it going because the compute modules themselves must have been on back order. They took a month to ship. And also, I was in the process of writing a book, so I was basically splitting my time between this YouTube channel and writing a book as well. And needless to say, it really tired me out. Yeah, that was a lot of work. But now that my book is mostly done, I'm finally able to show off this Turing Pi. I can't wait to get right into it. But before I do, I want to mention a few things first. First of all, well, my book. The title is Mastering Ubuntu Server 3rd Edition, and it's available for pre-order right now. I put a lot of work into this one. It has a lot of great content, and I can't wait for you guys to read it. If you go to ubuntuserverbook.com, you'll be able to pre-order your copy. And when you get it, please leave a review. That would really help me out quite a bit. But anyway, I put a lot of work into it, like I mentioned, and I really hope that you guys enjoy it. And second, I want to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, which is Linode. Linode is a sponsor of my channel because I actually love their service. They are my cloud hosting provider, and they have been that for quite some time before they even became a sponsor. Using their service, you can get your very own Linux server up and running in the cloud in minutes, and they have all kinds of distributions that you can choose from, including all the staples like Debian, Ubuntu, CentOS, and even, get this, Arch Linux, which is really awesome. The Linode platform is feature-packed. There's easy ways of getting all of your favorite applications up and running quickly, they even have a managed Kubernetes service, which is awesome, and it's personally one of my favorite things about the platform. And unlike some other platforms, such as AWS and Azure, Linode makes it easy to predict what your bill is going to be. All of the pricing is listed on the site, and it's easy to get to, so you'll know immediately what your infrastructure costs are going to be before you get your bill. If you check out the URL on the screen, which is also in the description below, you will get $100, yes, $100 in credit towards your new Linode account to spin up your very own Linux cloud instances. Thank you so much to Linode for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the task at hand and talk more about the Touring Pi. I'm really excited to dive into the Touring Pi and show you guys all about it, but before I can do that, it's important to understand what compute modules are. Now, I'm assuming most of you guys watching this video, you know what Raspberry Pis are. I know I'm not talking about the delicious treat. I'm talking about Raspberry Pi computing units, basically small little boards that you can use for whatever you want. You can set up servers, set up your own Kubernetes cluster, make an automatic door opener, a magic mirror. There's all kinds of different projects that you can work on that can be powered by the Raspberry Pi. 
Compute modules are also Raspberry Pi units, but they lack all the ports that you would expect to have on a normal Raspberry Pi. You won't find an Ethernet jack, power port, USB ports, or any of that because they need to be slotted onto a board to provide those things. Compute modules are essentially SODIMM chips with a Raspberry Pi contained inside. As for the Turing Pi, it's a mini ITX board that you can install in a mini ITX case. And on that board, you can install up to seven compute modules that can operate independently or even as part of a cluster. Basically, you can use the compute modules for whatever you'd like. And right here in front of me, I have a mini ITX case. Actually, this is a finished Turing Pi build that I'll show you in just a moment. But as for the case, there's nothing special about this whatsoever. It's a standard mini ITX case, the same that you can buy from wherever you get your computer parts from. Now you don't need to use a mini ITX case in the same format that I have here. You could even buy a server case and rack the Turing Pi as well. Now the Raspberry Pi platform, and I'm talking about now the you know normal Raspberry Pi units, the ones that do have all the ports, if you build a cluster with those, you'll probably end up with cables everywhere. Power cables, ethernet cables, you name it. But with the Turing Pi, you have one ethernet jack and then one power port to power all the Pis and provide ethernet to all the Pis, and that all the Raspberry Pi compute modules will get their own IP address. So you won't have a mess of cables around, which I think is awesome. And the ability to rack it in a server rack is pretty cool too. The process of mounting the Turing Pi board into the case was extremely easy. If you've ever built a computer before and then screwed a motherboard into a case, it's exactly the same thing. Once you have the board mounted into the case, you can then slot however many compute modules you have, up to seven, into the board. The board can be powered by a standard four pin power connector from an ATX power supply or an AC adapter, which is the way that I decided to go. Before you power it on though, you do need to install an operating system onto the compute modules. And then once you have that set up, you can go ahead and power it on and then each compute module should receive an IP address and then be available on your network. Now there are a few downsides when it comes to the build process for the Touring Pi. First of all, there's no IO shield, so you will have some empty space at the back of your case. Now my understanding is that you can 3D print an IO shield for the Touring Pi, but I don't have a 3D printer, so I wasn't able to do that. But if you do have a 3D printer, or you know somebody that does, that might be an option for you. But also, most ATX cases have on the front a power button, maybe a reset switch, some USB ports, probably some LEDs, but none of those things will work with a Touring Pi because there's, well, there's nowhere to attach the cables for those headers at the front of the case. So just keep that in mind that if your case has a power button at the front or LEDs, like I've mentioned, those things will not function on the Touring Pi. To get the compute modules up and running, you will need to flash an operating system, and there's three ways to boot the compute modules through the Turing Pi. First of all, the Turing Pi board has an SD card slot for each of the compute module slots, so you can write an operating system to an SD card, insert the SD card into the slot for a compute module, and then boot that compute module through that SD card. You can also use Network Boot if you have that set up on your network to boot your Raspberry Pi compute modules as well. Now the third method is booting via eMMC. You can buy compute modules with or without eMMC. And the way it works is that if your compute modules don't have eMMC storage, which is built-in storage, then you'll need to boot from the SD card slot for that compute module. If you use compute modules that do have eMMC, then the SD card slot won't be used to boot them. You'll need to flash the eMMC storage instead. And as for me, that's the method that I decided to go with. In order to flash the compute modules eMMC, there's a specific procedure that you'll need to go through. On the Touring Pi board, the first slot is used for the master module. And what that means is, if you want to flash any of the compute modules, you have to do that through the first slot. There's a jumper near the first slot that you need to move over to the left. And once you have that moved over to the left, you can attach a USB cable to the board, attach the other end to your computer, and then you power on the Turing Pi, 
and then run a special utility to activate boot mode. And once you do that, the eMMC storage of the first compute module will show up on your computer as a flash drive, essentially. Once it does, you could use whatever tool you normally use to flash SD cards or USB flash drives, for example, and then write an operating system directly to the eMMC storage. Once it's done, you unmount the compute module, take it out, insert another one, and then repeat the process until all of them have been written. The tool that you'll use to activate boot mode is called USB Boot. You can get it from GitHub. And all I had to do was install a dependency. I ran make to build it. And then I was able to run it with sudo. And then I was able to write an operating system image directly to the eMMC. Now on my end, I tried both Raspberry Pi OS as well as Ubuntu on the compute modules, and they work just fine. So essentially all I had to do was download an image, for example, the Raspberry Pi OS minimum image, which is a good choice. Once that's downloaded and your compute module is in boot mode, then you can use whatever utility to write that image directly to the card, which is what I've done. And then I logged into my router and I was able to see that each of the compute modules received an IP address and were ready for use. So what I've decided to do on my end was set up a Kubernetes cluster using K3S. So I went through the installation process on each of the Pis and they were ready to go. Setting up K3S on the compute modules is very easy. All I had to do was add some boot parameters to each of the compute modules. And then I rebooted them. And once they came back up, I ran the curl command from the K3S project to go ahead and get K3S installed. Once it was installed on the master node, I checked the status to see that it was running just fine. And then I grabbed the node token that was stored in a very special directory. And I used that to set up all the other compute modules as worker nodes for my cluster. I exported the node token. And then the URL to the master node. And then simply ran the same install command again on all of those and I was good to go. Overall, I've really enjoyed the time that I've spent with the Touring Pi. It's an awesome idea. I love the fact that I can have compute modules all in one case with one network cable, one power cable, and I can even hot swap any individual compute module if I have an issue with one of them without powering down the entire cluster, which makes it great for production use. Now, one downside is that Compute modules aren't as fast as a Raspberry Pi 4, for example. Now, my understanding is that there's a new generation of compute modules coming at some point in the future, but I don't really have all the details on that yet. But there is a noticeable speed decrease on the compute modules when you compare them to actual Raspberry Pis. And that's not a limitation of the Touring Pi board itself. That's actually a limitation of the SODIMM slot that the compute modules use to attach to the board. Now, whether or not the performance penalty of the SODIMM slots will impact you depends solely on what you intend to do with the Touring Pi and the compute modules. Now, on my end, I think they're plenty fast for running a cluster like K3S, which is, again, is what I've installed on mine. And depending on your use case, that might not matter. It's just something to keep in mind. But I think that the Touring Pi is a fantastic idea. It's something that I wished existed a long time ago and it's a great option for home lab if you want to try out things like containerization, maybe you're studying for a certification, you want to run some apps on your LAN, whatever you want to use yours for, um, I think it's a great fit for a lot of people out there. So definitely consider checking it out. Now, what's your opinion overall of the Touring Pi? Do you have one? Have you had a chance to check it out? Let me know in the comments down below. And I have more home lab. Raspberry Pi, and related content coming very soon. So I'll see you in the next video. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.